Assalamualaikum Dr. Najwadi I am Nosraya Shazli and also my teammate Amirul Mustaqim We present our project which is Exfiltration Corporate Document which is M57 Company which is Gen Cases For the first, I will present about the case study, eh, case background and also introduction about this project. For the introduction and also our case background, I will explain a little, little bit about the this background of the project. So, for the first is uh, this company, M54, is the refreshing web setup which is functioning on the body art catalog. So in 2009, they suffered a serious incident which is all the employer personal information to populate. So the chain which is a CFO, CFO of the company was suspect illegally sabotage and also trying to release the information and also overstepping the company security of the system so we as uh, in this project we as the investigator need to attempt the investigate the Jen and also her president Alison because Jen sent the some excel and also spreadsheet Uh, private Excel to the Ellison. So, in this study, in, uh, in this study, we want to investigate if Jen and Ellison account password could be easily had as perform an autopsy on the Jen computer this image. Next is objective object uh, in this project we have a three objective project objective investigation for the first is to determine whether or not determine whether or not the case has been had hack and second is to carry out a comprehensive investigation using a using the forensic tools without modifying and also damaging the suspect data which is Edison and also Gen data and also the third objective is to analyze the forensic copy of the drive-in order to extract useful data okay that is the methodology that we use for this investigation for the first is during the stage of evidence acquisition evidence is attract it is will explain explain more in the next chapter and also access data FTK has been used for the create a forensic image for the evidence third is MD5 hash have been used before start doing the analysis to ensure the integrity of the evidence and in the stage of we do the analysis autopsy also uh, used to investigate the evidence next is forensic process we have four stage that we implement for this project for the first is stage one stage one is investigation preparation so we identify the data and we also uh, identify the objective for this investigation and also for the stage two is evidence equation and we In this stage, we identify the sources of digital evidence, and also for the stage three, we analyzed of the evidence. So, after we do the evidence acquisition, and we interpret our result of the analysis, and we identify, 
and we use the technique and also tools that be suitable for this project and also for the lastly is result dissemination so in the end of the our project we conclude and we find if we find the best result for this investigation net is evident acquisition okay they have a five stage for the evident acquisition phase for the first is initiation initiation which we need to define the issue and also goal that require in this investigation we need to uh, identify the possible initial risk and also obtain, uh, obtain the warrant if necessary and second is we plan we plan a proper timeline and also list the role of the every investigators and also we uh, we prepare the budget the budget for this investigation and also for the stage 3 is executing and for this stage we gather all the evidence and secure the hash value and also for the stage 4 is controlling uh, the chain of the top custody will be established and also we evaluate the investigation and lastly is stage 5 closing we prepare the lesson that have been concluded from the observation and also con can and can suggest the recommendation for the uh, further investigation. In this, we will have to collect the consent. So to do that, we have to be formal. So we need to prepare the letter of consent to get the permission to conduct the investigation on the employees of the company. Another important aspect of the session phase is to identify the company policy so that we can uh, establish a telegram on which uh, company policy that might be violated. So here is example of the letter of consent that we have here. So here is another important uh, important aspect of the initiation phase where we try to identify the possible evidence. Here we can see there are two uh, possible evidence. The first one is laptop and from there we can actually confiscate the email, log file, document, media file, website data and user information. And another and maybe there is uh, any other storage devices that might be available. Uh, so maybe for example like a flash drive, uh, hard disk, uh, external hard disk and something like that. And we also identify the possible forensic tool. Uh, there are three that we we'll try to use. The first one is access data FTP image. So this will, uh, this tool will used to create a copies of the evidence disk that is called the forensic image, and it also can be used to view recover recoverable data from this. The second uh, forensic tool is autopsy. Uh, so autopsy is a computer program that will be useful to analyze forensic image. One of the advantage of the autopsy uh, is it is uh, intuitive and easy to use. Uh, for the Third uh, possible forensic tool is password forensic kit. So this tool will help us to recover password and also can support uh, more than 200 type of uh, file type and also provide an option to decrypt the hard drive. So moving to planning phase, uh, we'll come up with activities and timeline. So the project will start from June 2nd to uh, June 12th. So there are four stages. First one is preparation and in that preparation, we try to recognize the problem and the goal. After that, we list the resources needed and stage 2, we will do the acquisition of the evidence. We will try to collect the potential evidence and preserve the evidence. Step 3 is to analyze uh, the evidence using forensic tool and stage 4 is for documentation and presentation. So another aspect of planning is to actually assign the role and responsibility of the investigation team. So in this project, uh, the investigator will uh, be Amirul, which is me, and then Shazin. Uh, so here is the table where we try to uh, divide the role and responsible during this investigation. So Amirul, which is the role, will be evident inquisitor. So the responsibility will have to require, require uh, to follow the SOP when visiting the investigation scene. Also need to follow all the protocol and a good standard uh, during practice, a good practice standard during the handling of digital evidence. 
make sure the preserve uh, the evidence, make sure the, to preserve the evidence in best care as possible, make sure the evidence is in good hand and secure. And then second, the role is interviewer, which is the investigator with Shazin. So Shazin will conduct initial intervention of the, of the involved personnel, including witnesses. So she also will transcribe the interview for the presentation later, and also need uh, to design the questionnaire to be used in the interview. So uh, for analysis and implementation, uh, we both will, uh, will uh, do these uh, two roles for analysis. We will proceed with digital forensic technique analysis, and then make sure the analysis is not done on the primary evidence, but on the copy instead. So for the documentation, we also need to create a report and also to uh, come up with a proper uh, report that is uh, uh, well presented. So the also part of the planning phase is budget that will be used for the investigation. So budgeting is a crucial part of the planning stage as this is to make sure that all necessary tools and equipment are able to be added before the investigation can be done. And this will ensure that the investigation process can run smoothly and also budgeting can also prevent uh, from unnecessary spending during the investigation process. So uh, in the table here, we can see that we try to actually minimize uh, the cost whenever there is an available uh, item or material that we can get it from the forensic lab, we try to actually do that. So the cost will be 130 ringgit. And this is also, of course, not include uh, all the uh, item that can be get it in, uh, from the forensic lab. So the next phase is the execution, which is here, the first uh, aspect is the summary of the interview. So this is done by uh, uh, Shazlin. Uh, so here we have the three person of interest, which is Alison, the president of the company, then Jean, then Bob. Jean is the main suspect here. So the summary of the statement, Alison said that she wasn't aware of the incident until Bob, uh, the programmer informed regarding the Excel file found on the comment section uh, of their competitors for our website. So this uh, situation is suspicious as Alison uh, actually never asked uh, their CFO, which is the main suspect, to create the spreadsheet. And then also, uh, Jean, the main suspect, told Alison that she sent Alison the file by email as interrupted. But as far as Alison uh, concerned, there was no file that was received by Alison. And also, Jean, the main suspect, which is also Chief Financial Officer, said that uh, she received email from Alison asking about uh, the spreadsheet that we will need to be used for new funding round. And <coughs> Alison specifically asked Jean to send the file via email. And then also, and then Jean also stated that uh, this does not seem uh, suspicious at all because it is common for Alison to ask Jean to prepare the spreadsheet. And then the third uh, uh, interviewee that, that we have is uh, Bob, which is programmer. So uh, Bob, uh, actually the one that found the spreadsheet on the competitive forum. So she also, uh, he also asked Jean about uh, about the spreadsheet later after that. Uh, for the execution phase, uh, first we uh, show the physical evidence. And here the physical evidence that we have is a laptop that belongs to the suspect, Jean. And the model of the laptop is Lenovo ThinkPad T14 Gen 2. The color is black, storage is 256GB, and the RAM is 16GB, and the processor is Intel i7. So the condi condition during the uh, collection, uh, the physical condition of the laptop is in good condition. And there were many fingerprints uh, on the laptop during the collection. So why is this uh, evidence is confiscated? Uh, the main suspect admit that she was the one who created the Excel file. So hence, uh, we try to export, explore the, the, the machine that, uh, that she used to actually create the Excel file. So the process of creating the exact copy of the evidence can be done using forensic imaging technique. Uh, and one of the popular forensic software that can be used uh, is called Access Data FPK Media. And here we can see the step taken to create the image file of the evidence. Uh, evidence data. So first, uh, the hard disk, uh, hard drive of the laptop will be need be connected to the uh, workstation. After that, we can proceed with the uh, below step. So the first one is to open the access data, the access data FTK major, and then click file uh, on the top panel uh, of the software terminal. So and then after that, uh, select create image. The next, uh, next step is to select the source. And there are several options for source uh, that can we choose from. So since we connect the hard disk uh, direct to the workstation, we can choose a physical drive and then we should Click next. After that, uh, we select a drive. Uh, there is a drop down menu where we can choose from the list available. After that, we can uh, select uh, the image type. And there are four, uh, which is RAW, Smart, E01, and AFF. For this project, we will choose E01. So E01 is the NKS evidence file. So it will be used for the uh, later uh, in the analysis. After that, select the image list, the destination that we prefer. And after that, uh, the the process of creating image will begin. So uh, 
Major FTK Major will show a progress bar, and after the image is created, the FTK Major will try to verify the image file. After it has verified, it will show the result, which is the MD5 hash and then SHA1 hash and the back sector list. So in the controlling evidence phase, uh, the chain of custody will be established. Uh, the importance of chain custody is to also preserve the integrity of the evidence. So this is a very crucial part, as when the case is brought to the court, judge will not be able to secure a dirty verdict if there is any plausible evidence tempered. So, uh, so to secure the guilty verdict, judge cannot have any reasonable doubt, as this is the standard that is used in the justice system. So the chronology is, uh, is in the table. So the meeting with stakeholder, including the suspect was held after the consent of the president of the company, investigator team requests to seize the suspect uh, laptop and take note of the condition of the laptop. It is later labeled as evidence with state. Uh, hardware information also will be recorded, include the MD5 hash uh, of the evidence also uh, being uh, collected. Then after that, uh, the evidence is properly secured for transporting to the forensic laboratory. And after that, investigator two also uh, responsible for transporting the evidence to the lab. So after the after it arrived at the lab, the acquisition process begins. So in the analysis uh, phase, investigation team will discover the content of the evidence by using the forensic tool, which is the software. After all the basic information is extracted and recorded by the investigator for the documentation purpose, uh, focus analysis will be done to actually create the chronology of the incident and provide useful insight uh, for the prosecution team. So the first and important process uh, to start the analysis is to check the MD5 hash to ensure the integrity of the evidence is preserved before starting the analysis. So here is the step. First, open the MD5 check, which is a software. After that, browse the location of the image file that we already acquired using the FTK imager, and then click the calculate MD5 checksum. Then the MD5 hash will be calculated. So after that, uh, if the MD5 hash that we get during the acquisition phase uh, is uh, same or tally with the calculated MD5 hash, uh, a message will indicate that the MD5 checksum is matched. So this means that the integrity of our evidence is preserved. After that, we will proceed with standard exploration process. So in standard exploration process, investigator will explore the evidence, uh, file to extract information and structure of the evidence as much as possible. So autopsy is capable of automatically categorize the image file into four separate, separate sections. The first one is file views, data artifact, analysis result, and OS account. So here we can see the file view. In the file view, uh, it have like uh, file type, deleted file, and file size. So here are the number or the amount or amount of file that can be found into uh, these categories. The file type, you can see it have like uh, 5,000 images, video about 192, uh, audio, then archive, database, HTML. We also have deleted file. You have the file system, is 2,000, and then all uh, different type of uh, file is about 10K, 10,000. And uh, autopsy also categorize the file into the file size, which is uh, into the 50 to 200 megabyte, 200 megabyte to 1 gigabyte, and then uh, over 1 gigabyte file. So this is the file view. Uh, from the uh, autopsy. So in the, the next uh, categories is data artifact. So data artifact is the section where autopsy extract data uh, from the other file or artifact. In this section, there are 15 category, uh, categories, which are communication account, email messages, install program, metadata, operating system information, listen document, run program, cell, shell back, USB device attached, web bookmark, web cookies, web download, web form autofill, web history and web search. So here are the number or the child count that we can see. Let's say, for example, install program. The child count is 40. So it means that we have 40 installed program. So we can also get a recent document. Uh, the recent document that is accessed by the user. We also have the USB device attached. We can see 14. 14 device has been attached to the laptop. So it's quite important. That artifact is quite a strong, a strong information that can be extracted. So next is analysis result. So in this standard expression process, we try to actually see uh, the encryption suspected by the autopsy and then exif uh, metadata, extension mismatch, and user content suspected. Here below, we can see the example of encryption data. It has two, and then it has so many encryption, uh, extension mismatch uh, detected by the autopsy. So it's important to keep in mind that uh, autopsy able to actually score uh, the, the file, the analysis result.
So the last uh, standard exclusion process is OS account. Here we can see uh, there are many, uh, about 13. 13 accounts excluded and uh, every account is given administration permission. So we can see here the main suspect is Jean. So uh, the account was accessed 80 times and the last login was on 2008. Uh, July 20th. So this is quite important information that uh, we as an investigator will collect. Okay, next is about the analysis of the email and website. This is example the email, the analysis of email, the sum email that can be evidence for this investigation. And for the analysis of the website, they are not very suspicious about the web history and also uh, website but however they are attack work in the keyword hints so this suspicious uh, work can be can be evidence for this investigation so for the email for the example the email at the Alison contain a mail that to the suspicious email which is targetjoss at gmail.com and the return pack is the same as the prior email about the background check of the company and then the hacker told Jen not to tell everyone about the file that have been given to her and then also the Alison sent the email to Jen that actually she did not uh, send an email to the Jen so this is suspicious evidence suspicious uh, this is the evidence that can we we analysis to get the conclusion for this investigation and then this is a chronology of significant event that relate to email leaks. leaks. So, uh, for the first is for Edison, which is the president. They, uh, he sent the Jen email with a subject line Edison 57. So, the hacker actually... Uh, send the initial email that asking about the financial plan uh, she pretend as the Ellison which to generate a false identity and next the hacker uh, send false pen email to distraction tactic and then for the first request for from the hacker which is sensitive information which uh, subject the email subject which is background checks and then the gen express do equals requires via email about the email Edison is using and after then after that gen is respond and respond and say sure things ensuring the requester that she will send the request information and then hacker quickly request the sensitive information which is the excel file and also information of the company for the second time but she uh, she retains part to the unknown email which is targosh at gmail.com so this uh, so Jen send uh, all the information and also the file the Excel for file to this this email then the and then after the attacker have that file and attacker thanks to Jen for sending the information email and then suddenly the real Edison asking what actually Jen, re Jen receive email and also what actually Jen is doing so at that time that 
we know that the Alison was hacked. Next is the conclusion. So we can say that the Jen is not guilty. Why the Alison was the one who was hacked by clicking a link in the phishing email that pro provided to her by Jen. Alison have been hacked at the time, leading Jen to generate the Excel document and send it to them. We don't know until now. We don't know whether Jen or Alison send this private information to firm competitor. Thank you.